Viewer discretion is advised. On this video, the host of Pro-Am Outdoors, Marcus Morace is chewing gum throughout this video because he just quit tobacco products. Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Pro-Am Outdoors. Today, I got a buddy of mine that needed some help. And this is Jason Kujay. He has a lot of fishing gear that he hadn't used yet. And he don't know how to set it up. And we're here to help today here on Pro-Am Outdoors. All right, Jason, tell us what you got and uh, how'd you come about all this stuff? Well, it's just stuff that I've been collecting and wanting to get it all lined up and get it right and, you know, be optimal so that I'm the fishing as efficient as I possibly can. So some of this is older stuff, some of it's newer stuff. Obviously, I really like the, the Johnny Morris rods. I like the features that they have, but I've got just such a mix of stuff. I've got different size weight rods. I've got different speed reels and it's just time to get it all together. All right, so what we got is all this rod and reels, and what he wants to do is get the right reel on the right rod for the right situation. And uh, that's what I'm here to help him do. I used to be a tournament bass pro, and I've done seminars on bass tubs that I actually talk to people in front of thousands of people on this exact subject. The right rod, the right reel, the right lure, the right line for the right fishing situation. So we've got fluorocarbon on one of our reels, but the rest have 50 pound braid. And it's because the place where we're fishing, the bass are all real big. And we've broken off 50 pound braid before. I just don't want to go quite 65. Well, we're going to take a look at these reels and the rods and see if we can't match something up uh, and get him uh, more adequate on the water. So let's go ahead and look at a few uh, rods. Let's see what we got right here. We got a Shimano. Is there any rods that you think you would like better than any other one? Just right off the bat. I don't really have a preference. We've got eight rods here and only six reels. So a couple of rods aren't gonna be used. The only one that I categorically am not a fan of is this one because it's just super heavy. Okay, well that's your, that's probably your flipping stick. Okay, and that one's probably, yes. It is super, super, super stiff. This is all the backbone that it has. I mean, it's it's a flipping stick. So this one here actually is designed to put like a half ounce to a one ounce weight on. A big lure and you flip in the nastiest mats, craziest stuff. So when you pull up, you can jerk them completely out of the water and get them out of there. Do you have that type of situation on that one? I do not. This is eliminated. Okay. There you go. All right. <laughs> all right, one down. Okay. Now, what we want to do is find you on a small lake or whatever. We want to find, there's two different types of fishing that is the best for this type of around the world, uh, around the United States. I ain't going to say the world because it's different <laughs> down there. But you have a couple of different things that everywhere it always works. You got Texas rig. Yep. You got spinner baits and crank baits. Now with the spinner bait rod, you can do jerk baits. You can do some different stuff with kind of variety rod okay but you need a texas rig or a worm rod and what you want is a medium heavy fast action for that uh some people prefer to go to heavy but as you can see you've got braid okay yes. braid you don't want a rod that uh actually you know is so stiff that you're going to break your rod because you're setting the line you want to have a little bit of give so when you set the rod it's actually going to give a little bit when you do it so we're going to find you a good medium heavy action rod with a high speed reel that you have and we'll pair those up right now okay okay so we need to find a medium heavy fast action rod and a lot of times they'll say it right on on your deal okay which one's your favorite rod that you use see this one says power heavy action that's another stiffer rod hold that one up okay just hold it like you do it when you're fishing okay okay now what i want you to do is just lift that is actually more of a medium heavy fast action. So if you look right here, you can see it has a heavy backbone and then you have your parallelic bend. It's, it's short from here to here. That is actually more of a medium heavy, just a pad on the heavy side. So let's grab the next one. You like to fish heavy stuff, don't you? We're fishing for monster bass. We're going after really, really big bass. And so we want to be able to pull them up from the deeps before they wrap up and break us off on timber and things like that. So yes. Now, one of the first things I'm going to go ahead and eliminate now, okay, not eliminate, but we're going to put something to it because it's a big monster. 
It is a 7.9, line weight, 12 to 30 pound, power action, heavy, fast. Now go ahead and hold this one, okay? And it's got the micro eyes on it. Go ahead and lift up, okay? Because it's such a long rod, we'll set this one up to do Carolina rig. Have you ever fished with a Carolina rig? I have, but it's not allowed at our lake. Not allowed. Why? Because fish have more of a tendency to swallow and get deep hooked and we don't kill these fish. We don't take these because fish Because of the light wire hook that's floating on the end of a Carolina rig. Yes, and it's the spacing. Okay. And, and if it was just us personally, it wouldn't be a big deal. But we can't trust just any person that wants to come in fishing that they're jumping the on Carolina the spot rig. and make sure they don't get swallowed. This is the same reason why we don't allow the J-style hooks. You have to use EWG worm hooks. So they're less prone to swallowing those. We need these fish to survive. Now I'm teaching him about this. He is teaching me about lake conservation and that's a good thing for the lake that he fishes on. And what lake is that because you promote it? Our website is camelotbell.com. We actually have three lakes, uh, what is just nearly world famous bell. And then our second lake, the wolf pack. And our third lake, the round table, which is really on fire right now. Okay, cool. Okay, so what we're gonna do is now we know that, we can't do a Carolina rig for that lake, but you're specifically rigging out just for that lake right there, exactly. right? Exactly. That's what you need. You need to fine tune what you wanna do for this lake, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold this one to the side. Do y'all use heavy jigs or heavy, like punching weight worm hooks, like half ounce, one ounce? Okay. We're, we're actually going lighter weight. This one just got eliminated. Okay. <laughs> he got a little upset about that. Well, well, I'm here to help him out. If you like that rod, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. If you got lightweight worms and stuff, a little bit longer action can help you cast a little further, but you're trying to feel the action with a heavy rod on light stuff, it's, it's not really cool to set it. Okay, so now the rest of these are basically medium heavy fast actions. So we need a Texas rig worm rod. This one here is a little bit longer and it's a medium fast. It's a 7.3. Me, I would use this as a Texas rig specialty because, here, hold it. Let's get the feel of it. I knew it. Perfect bend for a Texas rig rod for braid. Now, what you want to do is since we got a rod picked out, we need to pick a real lot that he's going to like that will pair exactly what. This is a 7.3 to 1 gear ratio. 6.3 to 1. That is designed for crankbaits, slower moving baits. On a worm or jig rod, you want a faster reel action. So okay. That's going to be this one right here, 7.1. 7.1. Do you have it? There's a 7.1 there too, but that's got floor carbon on it. Right. This is going to be your better action for this rod right here. Okay. And then we're just going to go ahead and set it up so he knows. And that's going to be your Texas rig rod. Okay. Okay. That one there is going to be dynamite. All right. So you see how this one looks. Well, how's that going to feel for you? You already know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hand me that Okeechobee crawl. All right. I'm going to hang that on here, and this is how I know what I'm doing. All right. We got one down. Let's work on the next one. Got him a worm rod set up. Texas rig worm rod. Now, let me know what type of lure you want to use uh, next. Lipless crank. Lipless crank. Let's go with a 6-2 to 1. And I've always liked the Shimano uh, Sitka. Six. I have one. Oh, man, that's a good reel. You got everything set up for braid, and he wants to keep doing braid. Now, I would do a fluorocarbon to braid, so you have a little bit of shock action between that. He does not want to do that because of the area that is in, but I would highly, highly recommend doing a leader if you're using braid with crankbaits. And here's the reason why. Never set the hook on a crankbait or lipless crankbait. Just, you feel the bite, just start pulling. He's still there, then you start reeling. That's all you have to do on that. So uh, we're gonna try, you have to get that technique down and not to set the hook or you will lose them on that. So we need to find a rod, because we got the reel right here. Uh, six, two to one is gonna be great for that. Let's find a rod. Now all these rods are pretty much the same, but different brands. So every different brand, even though they're gonna be medium, heavy, fast action, one of these is gonna have a lighter action to actually run that crankbait better. So let's find out. So go ahead and pick one up. 
I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up. See that one there already has a lighter action because look at the parallelic bend. The other one's one stopping here. This one's way back here. So you've got a little bit. So let's put that inside. That may be it right off the bat. Pick the next one up. Let's see. Oh no, look at that one. That could be a spinnerbait rod. See how far the parallelic bend is? Way back here, okay? Now, let's pick up the next one. That one's even more, okay? That is definitely a spinnerbait rod. So remember that one. Okay. Okay, that's your spinnerbait rod. These two here could be a crankbait rod, okay? Pick up on that one. No, not as much because you see where it's at. Another crankbait, but here's what I would do with this one. What size is this one? Seven foot, that's a good one. I would actually try to keep that one for like maybe a jig rod, a light jig, or a um, drop shot or wacky. Okay, try this one. This is a fine rod right here. Okay, that one's really stiff, so you're back to another worm rod here. Okay, so here's our two right here that we're going to either do spinnerbait rod or swim bait rod. So let me see that spinnerbait rod. Now we're gonna make this one be a crankbait rod because you got more parallelic bend. You're gonna have less likely to break off by bending it. So now we're gonna set this reel up on that rod. All right, so now we got something a little bit more bend to it. Even though these are all the same as what they're saying, you know, this says magnum, medium, heavy casting, even though it has a better bend to it. <laughs> But you ever bought two different shirts that said they were the same size, but they didn't fit you the same? <laughs> exactly. All right, so now, this is your lipless crankbait rod. Okay. You, you want to rig it out or you Oh yeah, oh yeah, no, I got it. I'm not, now, memory doesn't serve. I got to put the bait on it, so I'll know what I'm doing here. All right, so do you want me to put some fluorocarbon on the first time when you break off, then you just change out? Problem is, I don't think I have enough here to spare. You got plenty there to spare, actually too much. You should be an eighth of, no, you're about an eighth of an inch. All reels need to be an eighth of an inch below the spool so you get less backlash. Because these things will hold 150 yards. You know anybody that can cast 150 yards? I don't. Or why would you ever want to cast 150 yards when you just ease in a little closer? I have gotten the best bites from the furthest distance casts. <laughs> it does happen. Me, I can be right on top of them, flipping pitch and knock them in the head and make them bite. That's my style of fishing, is fishing junk, trees lay down. Oh, look at that spot right there. Behind that log. Pop them, pop them in the head and work them out. You want to test with your mouth or lip or tongue. And what you're doing is you feel them for any imperfections in the line, then you know if it's going to be good or not. So I'm going to get about two, two foot, something like that. And uh, that line right there is about, about 15 pounds based on what I taste. I taste 15 pounds in this, okay? Now, I, I can feel the diameter and the strength by pulling it. It's about 15, maybe 17 pounds, which is gonna be good. All right, there you go. Now, I'm gonna show you something. We'll grab the bait itself. Now, what I wanna show you, I'm grabbing the bait, step back further. Now, reel up a little bit. Just reel up a little bit. We're gonna, we're gonna test it. All right, just give it a little small pull on it. Now, pull it with the shock resistance. Feel a little bit more shock into it. That's what you want, just that. Look, see, it ain't much, but look, you can feel, see the feel of difference. That's yeah. all you need, just a little bit. Help you from not losing fish. And if you break off right off the bat, say, screw it. And tie it the way you want. <laughs> okay. All right. Two next. Hits, two down. Two down. Two down. You got another seven one. Since these are more geared out for, uh, I would, these would be your backup worm rods. That's where I put this one here. I just go, I can just tell you now, go ahead and put this one over here for this is a worm rod. Okay. okay. Since we got that out of the deal, so now we're eliminating this because we knew this one was stiffer. So, and this is a seven one to gear ratio. There's your next worm rod right there. So you just go ahead and know that. We're down to spinnerbait. Which one was it? The green one, right? Okay, now, with this being a worm rod, mm -hmm. is it okay to do my Wacky Cinco? Honestly, a Wacky Cinco, I'd use on a, a bass seven, seven foot fitting reel. 
medium fast and I'd catch eight pounders all day long and but you what you're doing is you're letting them run and reel run and reel he's a good one he's a fighter let me I'm still trying to figure it out yeah nice little bass the smaller hook you're not getting as far back into the bone meat of their head you can pull this out by fighting them too hard on a heavy axe but you don't have one of those rods do you no, what I have here is what we've got. Okay. So it's either this or this. Okay, this will go this will go on this rod right here because of the head weight and size. Okay. Okay. If you want to do it a shaky head, do it. Now next we're doing the spinnerbait rod, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're down to three reels. The longest cast and smoothest reel you got out of those three. Because they're all six two to one, six three to one, right? And this is That's the die with Steve's. Yes. Very, very nice reel. Love it. This one here is your go-to. That's your spinnerbait rod right here. And on spinnerbait, because it's got the heavier hook, you go straight braid with it. There you go. Straight braid. Down to two other reels. And they're still both slow reels, and this is gonna be hard. I honestly don't think it's gonna matter on either one. These are gonna be your pick up a rod because you broke off rod. Okay, we got poppers. You need a really long rod for that. This is the longest rod out of that. Which one has the better ball bearing set? That one though. That's it, right there. All right, this one's gonna go here for six two to one. You honestly want a fast reel for top water. Here's the reason why. Plop, 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 you gotta get it in real fast. Mm -hmm. To recast right back. You start trying to go slow, try to get in. You know, but this is gonna work good for top water popper style situation because of the rod. Let me see the rod, pick it up. Let's look at it. Yeah, you got enough backbone there to pop it, but yeah, you got enough to, those treble hooks again. Once again, it's down to the treble hook. So this rod right here is going to be whatever rod. Whatever you want to do, just throw it on there and cast. This one here, I think can do it because it's a medium heavy fast action, the all around rod. So there you go. Subscribe to see the next video. It's part two. We will be talking about the tackle, and there's a lot to talk about. If you ever need any help, just hit me up in the comments below. If you want to learn how to do the right rods and the right reels for the right fishing situation, set it up the right way so that you can have more success on the water, just hit me up in the comments below. And we'll love to help you out and see you there on the lake. This is Marcus Moros. Jason Kujay. This is Pro-Am Outdoors. Remember, keep your line wet and your hook sharp. We'll see you next time.